Storm chasing in Oklahoma. It's as American as apple pie. The state of Oklahoma is a tornado magnet. An average of 60 tornadoes tear through the Sooner State every year. Oklahoma City, the state capital, is always holding its breath. Oklahoma tornadoes are known for their power, their gargantuan size, and their ability to change lives in an instant. Every year, storm chasers flock to the Great Plains. Their live streams become lifelines for folks in harm's way. But a proposed bill in Oklahoma's House and Senate aims to regulate storm chasing. It would award special privileges to some and potentially limit access for others. I'm a Harvard-degreed atmospheric scientist, my radar senior meteorologist, and of course, a storm chaser. So yes, I have opinions. But I spoke with other folks too, like meteorologists and storm chasers from the Ryan Hall Yall team, Reed Timmer's team dominator, and Max Velocity himself. We all have serious concerns about this bill and its potential to endanger both storm chasers and the public. Let's break down what the bill says. House Bill 2426 was authored by Oklahoma State Representative Scott Fetgatter. It's called the Oklahoma Emergency Weather Response and Tracking Regulatory Act of 2025. The bill would basically divide storm chasers into two classes, professionals and amateurs. Professional storm chasers would pay a $500 license fee. That would allow them to act as emergency vehicles, potentially closing roads and ignoring traffic rules. Everybody else would be an amateur and would have to yield to the professionals. But here's the thing, who is a professional storm chaser? According to the bill, somebody from a university research institution or a quote, qualified media outlet. But upon closer inspection, qualified media outlets are only FCC recognized television stations. That's potentially concerning Local TV is no longer the leading source of weather forecasts anyway. Now don't get me wrong, the Oklahoma City TV meteorologists are giants in their field. Oklahomans trust them. They've saved thousands of lives. But TV is just a small piece of the puzzle. Nowadays, how we consume weather information is rapidly changing. In today's day and age, more people rely on weather apps than local TV. Here at my radar, we have 15 million monthly users who trust us for hyper-local forecasts. My friend Ben's a TV meteorologist. He posted a simple Reddit survey and found that hardly any Reddit users rely on TV news. Folks under 40 largely prefer social media and digital sources. That's allowed YouTube weather mega channels to come to prominence, namely Ryan Hall and Max Velocity. The two channels average tens of millions of views every month. We've had, you know, tens of thousands of people tuning into big severe weather events, big hurricanes. And I think there's a reason why people are enjoying the commercial free content. I mean, you're talking about when Reed and I are streaming uh, live chasing, especially in Oklahoma, we may have hundreds of thousands of people view that. Um, that's a very big market and that's just us. Let's compare that to Oklahoma's TV news. News 9 is the highest rated station. An average of 48,000 households watch their 10 p.m. newscast. Issuing professional storm chase licenses only to TV folks is short-sighted and exhibits a fundamental lack of understanding as to where people consume weather information. The bill also thinks TV stations issue severe weather watches and warnings. Those only come from the National Weather Service, no matter what promotional practices local TV stations engage in. Now, what would a professional storm chase license allow anyway? So-called professionals would be permitted to blow through stop signs and red lights, potentially speed recklessly and go the wrong way down streets. Storm chaser convergence is already a problem. There have been far more storm chaser wrecks caused by bad driving than there have been caused by bad weather. Now, bad things can happen to anyone. None of us are immune. Our community has suffered loss on the roadways before. We all carry that with us. Even driving carefully can be a challenge in extreme weather. But some of the Oklahoma City TV stations have a reputation for potentially willful, careless driving. In 2017, chasers hired by the Weather Channel were both killed, and then they killed a third driver when they ran a stop sign. Bending laws to embolden TV storm chasers to drive recklessly or otherwise illegally is not the solution. But I have had bad run-ins with legacy media chasers breaking the law, speeding, um, running stop signs, running red lights enough already that we don't need to enable that. I don't think that breaking the law on the roadway is necessarily a good thing for anybody. I think the most tell, tell sign that this is not 
going to be good if passed is that largely the Oklahoma Highway Patrol is very much against this. Now, the case could be made that this bill endangers more than just storm chasers. It endangers the public. It does so by giving preferential treatment only to TV stations. I, it's literally picking and choosing. It's rainmaking, like literally p p picking and choosing who gets the access. That could put the public at risk, especially those consuming weather information in more modern ways that aren't TV. Yeah, I think it's certainly dangerous to f or, uh, favor any medium of communication over the other. I don't care whether someone's getting their weather information on YouTube. I don't care if they're giving it on a Fox, a cable news network, anything. I don't care if they're getting it via passenger pigeon. As long as they're getting it in a way that they want to get it, that's what matters the most. And favoring any of those ways uh, on a law level or a governmental level is not a good thing because you need to let people do what they want to do so they have access to that information in a way that they're actually going to consume it. There is some argument to be made that streaming sources can provide as good, if not better coverage than conventional TV. Yeah, so right now we're working with a team, I believe it's right around 150 storm chasers, whether it's through a broker, just an individual chaser who's come to us. So we actually have a much more expansive network of storm chasers than a, say, a local news network would have. If this bill is passed, TV would have the upper hand and could potentially restrict access to non-TV sources. And I think it would be less safe for those people because so many young people don't have television anymore. Anymore. They don't even have access to it. They all use social media streaming app. You know, chasers being out there on a storm, being able to see a tornado, that, that's a big thing for the viewer. The viewer's going to take it way more seriously if they see that tornado. It's also worth noting that viral disaster footage is unfortunately what often compels the government or the public to act. Aftermath footage from online platforms is instrumental in raising money and garnering aid. The Ryan Hall team, for example, has raised and donated millions. Even after the fact, what what gets sort of attention to an area, what gets the funding, what gets the resources, what gets the help is visuals from that afflicted area. 100%. And the people there are storm chasers. Yeah, no, and this year, I mean, with Team Dominator, we've raised money on several occasions and we were able to raise that money because of the footage we got while we were out there. Um, that's a great point as well, something I really haven't even thought about that. Now, the bill isn't official yet, but it has gained support from local TV stations in the Oklahoma City Metro. The reasons are pretty obvious. The media, as far as as far as what it used to be and where it's going, is kind of dying. And I think this is a last grasp of straws to keep them relevant and in the game. But it really does feel like this is something that might be backed by some of the local news stations or maybe some media, you know, just in an attempt to um, try to get some of those viewerships, the viewership back from those live streams that they've definitely lost. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. It's awful. It's an obvious like peddling of uh, of, you know, of a news station that's dying, trying to like claw its way back in. So uh, I think what Legacy Media is trying to do is basically say we want a monopoly here and we don't want other people intruding on our you know channels that we have like News 4 or News 9. Generally speaking, passing legislation to favor old technologies over progress never really ends well for anyone. It's just going to cause chaos and mayhem. Uh, I mean, I think the only way to think of it is a step backwards. I mean, the actual bill's text itself says legacy, or le the actual bill text itself says legacy news media. Don't we want to be looking into the future? So future news media, don't we want to be expanding anything that we're doing out to these new people so they could have access to that in the future? If this does pass, are you afraid it will spread to other states too? Oh, I have zero doubt that it will. I mean, I, I mean that's just the way I feel like a lot of these local laws work. I'm kind of low-key worried if Oklahoma passes, Kansas will follow suit because they generally do have, my experience, have kind of an anti- storm chasing sentiment in the overall the state of Kansas. But above all, remember that storm chasers from the internet are humans. When called upon, they're EMTs, they're first responders, they're traffic directors, they're whatever they have to be in the face of disaster. This is like when I was chasing um, in Rolling Fork, Mississippi, where for two hours straight, I didn't see one first responder, but who was there is every storm chaser I knew pulling people out of home. Now, in the interest of balance, I'll be the first to admit, there are some legitimate issues with storm chasing. Bad, distracted, or tired driving is the biggest. Chaser traffic jams and chaser convergence are issues too, but restricting freedom of movement is an issue that is tenuous at best, and at worst, potentially unconstitutional. This isn't the right way to fix it. I'm meteorologist Matthew Capucci. 
Many of the folks you saw in this video are on paper competitors, but we all share the same mission, to educate, inform, and protect our viewers. It's 2025, and that sort of thing can happen on many different platforms. We hope the state of Oklahoma will consider that. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.